I'm Tim Wilson, editor of Dark Reading, and I'm here in Las Vegas at the Black Hat Conference. I'm standing with Dan Kaminsky, the director of penetration testing at IOActive and the man who's kept the industry abuzz for the last month with his discovery of a domain name server vulnerability that could cause problems for internet users all across the globe. Dan, can you tell us a little bit about the flaw and how it might affect users? So the flaw is, uh, is fairly straightforward. Uh, we always knew that there's about a 1 in 65,000 chance that if the bad guy wanted to have his IP address come back instead of, say, the real IP for Yahoo or MySpace or CNN or whatever, if the bad guy wanted his IP to come back, he had a 1 in 65,000 chance. However, we thought that he could only try once an hour, once a day. He couldn't just try over and over and over again. And it turns out other by design aspects of DNS, the whole system with delegation from one server to the next to the next, that system can be abused to actually, instead of having to wait to try again, to wait to get another shot of that one out of 65,000, you can just go over and over and over and over and over again. And you know, if you can try a couple thousand times a second, one out of 65,000 is not that much of a barrier. Give us some idea of how this flaw might be exploited by attackers. So the big thing that I've actually been talking about here, so I've been saying, you know, the entire web, when you actually go to websites, is really controlled by DNS. And by the way, email is really controlled too, because DNS tells you where emails go. What I hadn't talked about until today's conference is the implications of that. Looking at the web, we think SSL is great and wonderful, but really, there are so many scenarios in which SSL falls on its face, and frankly, has been allowed to fall on its face because there just haven't been easy man-in-the-middle attacks until now. But email is where I'm really afraid. Yes, as I said earlier, Look, the ratio of sensitive information to total lack of encryption is higher in email than anything else. But if you look at the implications of what moves over email, for example, one of the things that I was talking about was every major website has a forgot my password link where you don't need to know the password. You just say, I forgot. And you put in an email and then it sends an email out. And if the email system is compromised, uh, you just got access to pretty much any account on any system, no matter how it's been built by design. As part of this discovery, you organized an unprecedented patch management process that involved multiple vendors across the industry. Can you tell us a little bit about the patch and how you managed to organize all these vendors together in this single effort? Essentially, the answer was we needed to find the people who were in the positions of power to actually get things done. And I knew some people, Paul Vixie knew people. And at the end of the day, when we worked with the vendors, when we worked with Microsoft, when we worked with Cisco, they were great. They were fantastic. You know, in the face of a bug of this severity, they realized this is really going to affect our customers. And we also realized if we didn't all go out at the same time, you know, Security is not contained in a single company anymore. It never was. Heterogeneous networks have security that crosses all company bounds. And so for us to secure the internet, we had to work together and get a patch out on the same day. Now that wasn't enough because patches do not deploy themselves. They do not deploy themselves automatically. People need time to test. People need time to get things out. And so we spent the last 30 days keeping as much of the nature of this bug quiet as possible. And what I've been spending the last 30 days, contacting major websites saying, listen, you've got to understand this has serious server implications. Contacting the SSL certificate authorities. Do you ever wonder why you get a certificate and not someone else? Well, because the way they authenticate that you get it is they send you an email. And so if their email system is down, SSL is broken everywhere. And so that's what a lot of this last month has been. It's not just, we did a patch, well, my work here is done. How do you get people to deploy it? And so it's been a lot of talking to media, talking to not just security professionals, not just ourselves, but talking to network engineers, talking to the people who actually, the grunts who need to find the name servers and test the name servers and fix the name servers at the cost of a lot of overtime and probably a lot of pizza. That's what this last month has been about, and the numbers are in. 120 million customers from broadband are protected today. 
70% of mail servers at Fortune 500 protected. 60% of the, the Fortune 500 just in terms of their everyday browsing. These numbers aren't perfect. Maybe, maybe I even say these numbers aren't good enough. But wow, like this, this is, this is more success than I had any right to expect. And I didn't do most of the work. I just found the bug and got people to write some code. This process took 30 days to disclose before it came to light completely here in Las Vegas today. Can you tell us a little bit about how you decided to take such a long time to disclose the flaw and what you'd do differently if you had it to do over again? Without question, uh, the biggest mistake I made at the beginning in terms of disclosure was going out without any uh, fellow security engineers having seen the flaw, without having had anyone completely disconnected validate and publicly vouch for it. That was a mistake. Um, I figured I'm Dan Kaminsky, I do DNS security a lot for everyone. Why would anyone doubt me? You know, I've got the vendors behind me, I've got the United States government behind me, I've got the inventor of DNS behind me. Why would anyone doubt? Well, they should have. You can't vouch for your own bug. I showed up and had all of this big high word, oh my God, you know, you've got to apply this patch without a shred of technical detail. You know, usually when that happens, someone's lying to you and someone's trying to sell you something. And so, accidentally, I had totally stepped into this role which people should be complaining about. Well, we fixed that, we had some third party peer review, and it didn't last forever. 13 days in, some portion of what had happened came out. But you know, what came out 13 days in is not what came out today. For 30 days, we kept under that SSL was in a whole bunch of trouble. For 30 days, we kept out of trouble that the forgot my password links were not doing so hot either. The number of implications of these bugs, you know, one thing people don't realize is there's a third age of hacking. If the first age was the servers, a mail server, a web server, whatnot, and then we stopped that because, hey, the servers are locked down. Now we move on to second age, which is the clients, the web browser clients, because those are the code bases that you can get to browse to arbitrary attacker controlled locations. Now you'll get the bytes to the web browser. But if you actually look at a machine, turns out the internet is more than just the web. And there's all of these other programs that are all going back to normally non-attacker controlled destinations. But this one time, oh wait, DNS is hosed. It only starts with auto updates. There's so much on systems that go back to trusted locations and assume there's no bad guy between them and the location. And they're wrong. They're just wrong. Well, it's a great achievement. We appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today, Dan. I do what I can. <laughs>